Okay, now I want to talk about how the rook, bishop, and queen move. And here I've cleared the board um, and placed a rook in the center of the board. Just to let you know, my chess program, which is Fritz 10, which is a question I get a lot, um, requires that I have kings on the board. And um, just so you know, I also use Microsoft Media Encoder to record my videos. That's another question that I get a lot. Um, but now I want to um, discuss the movement of the rook. So the rook moves horizontally and vertically, sort of what you want to call up and down, left or right, and it can move any number of squares that it wants to. So it can move clear across, across the board. So what am I talking about? So let's so it can move horizontally, or what I call left and right, any number of squares. So I'm going to highlight those squares for you. So you know, here's horizontally or left and right. So the rook can move to any one of these squares. And it can move all the way across the board if it wanted to. Or it could just move one square. It can also move um, vertically, or what I'm going to call up and down. So the rook can move one square, or it can move all the way down. So the green squares, the highlighted green squares, are the squares that the rook can move to. So now let's practice moving the rook. Let's practice moving the rook over to this square here. Well, there's um, a number of ways the rook can get here. It could simply go, it can move here, and then down here. So it moves first horizontally, and then vertically. So here it moved three squares, and here it moved three squares. Or technically, it could have moved two squares, and then one square, two squares, and then one square. The same thing, but it would take in my previous example, was it only took two moves to get here. In this example, it would take four. So just uh, as in, a, let me just move in the rook, I can move it here. Oops. And then here. Just to let you know, remember how I said that chess is a turn-based game, meaning white moves, then black moves, then white moves, so that's why the king had the move there. And actually, I forgot to turn off the chess engine. So in my second example, I moved the rook to here. And then remember, black has to move. I'm just moving the black king. Then the rook moved to here. Just move the king back. Then the rook moved to here. And then the rook moved to here. So I'm just backing up. So that's one example of how the rook moves. I can, I can actually say two examples. So now let's move on. Or let me give you an example. Maybe the rook can move actually. It can move here. It can maybe move back. It can move all the way over. And it can move down. Okay, so just just going to move back. Notice how the rook moves sort of in straight lines up and down, back and forth. Now let's move on to the bishop. Okay, so I've replaced the rook with a bishop. And the bishop moves diagonally or sideways. What I mean by that is this is what I mean by a diagonal direction or sideways. It's not a straight line, even though this is technically a straight line, but it moves diagonally. So sort of like in this direction. So let me highlight all the squares that the white bishop can move to. It can move diagonally this way, diagonally this way, diagonally this way, or diagonally this way. And the bishop can move any number of squares. So one or two, it could move one, or it could move two. Or it can move all the way to the end of the board. Sort of like the rook. It can move any number of squares that it wants to. So there it would move three. So let's practice moving the bishop. Let's say let's practice moving the bishop to this square right here. So the bishop could move one square and then two squares. Or it can move one one, 
and 1. Notice how this in the green example it took 2 moves. In the red example it took 3 moves. Here the bishop only moved 1 square at a time. Here it moved 1 and then 2. So let's practice moving the rook, I mean the bishop, to the square. Well, it could get there by moving first to here, and then to here, or it could move here, and then here. Or maybe in a third example, I move here, and then here, and then here, and then here. So just moving the bishop. So actually my computer is telling me that it's a draw. So uh, that's what that beeping is about. So there, there was an example of actually how the bishop would actually move. Okay. Actually, that was two examples. So now let's move to the queen. So I've replaced the bishop with the queen. And the queen is like a combination of the rook and the bishop. That's why I cover the rook and bishop first. That means the queen can move any number of squares horizontally, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. So let me highlight all the squares that it can move to. So let's start with the First, the vertically, or up and down squares, so it can move any one of these squares. Then it can move horizontally. Just, that's all these squares. Notice that's basically the rook. Those are the same squares the rook can move to. Now let me highlight the diagonal squares. So diagonally this way, diagonally this way, diagonally this way, and diagonally this way. Well, those were the squares that the bishop could move to. So that's why the queen is like a combination of the bishop and the rook. And the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. So now let's practice moving the queen. Let's practice moving the queen over to uh, this square here. Well there's a number of ways the queen can move here. It can move two squares and then what is that? Five squares? It can move two squares, one square, one square. It can move three squares and then two squares. It could even move three squares, two squares, and then, uh, what is this, seven squares? So there's many ways the queen can get there, but that's just an example. Always remember is that, you know, after one side moves, the other side has to move. So just an example. So then the black would have to move, and then the queen can move here. Black moves, and then the queen can move here. So just remember when I was giving you the example of how the pieces move there, it's not that white gets to make five moves in a row, but that's just the different paths that the piece could take to move there. But uh, in actual practice, in an actual game, the sides would take turns moving their pieces. So if I just do that in reverse, that's what it looks like in reverse. Okay, so that's how to move the rook, the bishop, and the queen.